Hey, VG people, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to talk about the angelfish. Now, there are fresh and saltwater versions of the angelfish. I predominantly do freshwater. So we're going to talk about the freshwater angelfish today. Now, the angelfish is a beautiful fish in this hobby, one that a lot of people like to breed. Uh, today, I'm just going to focus on the koi angels because I have a thing with koi patterned fish. I love them. Now, they're a very popular fish among most hobbyists for their ease of breedability and because they have like a unique arrowhead look to them. Now, these fish can be peaceful or they can turn on a dime and be savages. Now, typically, they only become savages when they are having children so you just have to keep an eye on them if they start breeding just make sure they're as isolated as you can be or just pull them and put them in their own tank because together with other fish they might go a little crazy and kill things if they get too close to the babies like most cichlids in this hobby uh, the angelfish is native to south america it's going to be in the amazon rivers places like french guinea brazil colombia peru uh, they're going to be found in slow moving streams Flood plains, swamps, acidic water, no salt to it, and it's usually typically rather warm. Angelfish have a lifespan of about 10 to 12 years if you cape them properly. Now, they are also very readily available. A lot of people breed these. People have called them the currency of the hobby because if you breed angelfish, you're going to be making a lot of money through trade-ins at your fish store or through selling online. Average cost, you're looking at, depending on the size, anywhere from a few bucks, upwards of 40 if you're getting a full-grown adult fish. So, you know, they can be a little pricey, or you can buy the babies, and they're going to be super cheap. You know, angelfish are rather active, though they are a slower swimmer. They're also going to predominantly hang out in the middle part of your tank. They'll be going in and out of your plants and stuff of that nature. So, it is a good idea if you're going to keep these to have some type of live plants or fake plants that are going to simulate live plants they might be used to. So for tank parameters with these guys, um, you could get away with one in a 20 gallon, though they typically want to be more than just a solitary fish. So I would say a 40 gallon tank would probably be the minimum you want to get for a pair of these or a few of them. I wouldn't go more than like four or five in a 40 gallon. Uh, temperature, 75 to 82. So still within that community fish range. Uh, for substrate, they typically are used to a soft sand or some type of like dirt and mud. So if you've got a sand substrate or a fine gravel, you're probably going to be okay. Uh, they are going to want plants and places to hide. pH uh, 6.5 to 7 is going to be a good range for these guys. And your filter, you're not going to want it on super high. You're going to want it on like a minimum to low flow. Because again, these guys are used to slow moving areas if they're from the wild. Now, you can put these in a community setting. Uh, you're going to want things that aren't going to be overly aggressive and territorial. So if you have these guys in your tank, I would say these should be the only cichlid fish in there. And then you compare them with things like dwarf garamis, so your honey garamis, plecos, mollies, guppies, smaller tetras, things that aren't going to be aggressive and fin nippy because they do have those, you know, flowing tendrils. So you don't want things that are going to be eating those thinking they're, you know, worms. So you can do quarry cats, things like that. Super peaceful. If it says peaceful compatibility next to it at the fish store or online, that's what you're going to want to go for these guys, just so you don't bring out the aggressive nature of other fish if they are laying eggs and fish think free food. Or again, those flowy tendrils look like a worm to some fish. Food wise in the wild, these guys are going to be living on a diet of smaller things. So insects, uh, small crustaceans, tiny fish and some insect larvae and things like that. So you're probably not going to want to pair these with small chili rasporas or any like fish that's under probably an inch and a half just to give you a little birth uh, in the captivity. You're going to want to give them a high protein high fiber diet with very little plant matter in them. So if they're in a community setting, you might want to try feeding them separately if you can. So think things like tube fix worms, blood worms, uh, Daphnia, Hikari freeze dried are all good choices. And then if you want to try a flake or a pellet, I would say go with an extreme 
You can get the Nano, you can get the Cichlid Peewee. You could go with the Hikari smaller foods. There's just a bunch of stuff you can try. Bug bites would be another good option. Your small tropical or your medium size would be good for these guys. If you want to try your hand at breeding them, you're going to need some kind of cone structure or cylinder type thing. Um, if you got a pair, a 20 gallon is good for breeding them, but not long term. Temperature, you're going to want about 82 with a decent slow flow to it. And they can lay up to, you know, about 400 eggs. And then, of course, the male will fertilize them. It takes a few days for the eggs to hatch. If you do have babies, live baby brine is going to be a great option for these guys. Now, overall, I think angelfish are adorable, beautiful fish. They have a unique body shape to them. I love the koi, the koi angels. I love the body pattern and the coloration on them. I'm going to give angels a 8.5 out of 10. Because they aren't the easiest beginner fish, but if you give them enough love and care, they can be a great addition to your tank, species only, or community tank. As always, thank you all so much for watching the video. I hope you did enjoy. Leave a comment down below. Let me know your experience with angelfish, if you've kept them. If you have a favorite strain of them, personally, I think the kois are beautiful. And until next time, I'll see you guys around.